As a DP, daylight interiors are one of the most commonly shot scenes in all of movie making. You got overcast, afternoon, morning time, you even got blue hour. So today we're gonna look at that. We're gonna deep dive what all of daylight looks like and what mood we're going to fit the story. Yeah, we're gonna go through four different looks, different times of the day and different emotions of a scene. There's a lot more considerations that go into what a daylight scene should look like. And that's what you're here for. I'm stoked, let's experiment. All right, guys, I'm with JC Falcon, AKA Tiny Machine. Big fan of yours, go look him up on Instagram. I wanted to go for a dramatic look. I wanted to darken it all out. I wanted there to be a ton of contrast. What do we got going today for bringing in this sunlight coming into the room? Because it's not sunset right now, we ended up gelling up the windows with half CTO so that when you go inside, the world will look warmer. On the ceiling, we have this queen, which is trash bag material to darken the top. A lot of people don't realize you get a lot of ambient spill from the ceiling because it's a white ceiling for most parts. Harder light is usually what you're getting with sunset because the sun's lower, things are more direct, so that's kind of what we wanted. We wanted two point sources that will just bring in the shadows and then we can cut it off the top with a little bit of a two by three solid. Usually when you're working with uh, point sources, you want to have a flag around so you can create that shape. This afternoon, sun is low, but I also wanted to see those rays. I like those dramatic sunbeams coming in. When we have haze in the room, you always want to use the light as a backlight and that's when you see the rays. We're getting that downward slash, really helped us. JC's the man. I just met him today, I'm a big fan, bro. We're gonna be working together. We're gonna be working oh, together yeah. again, man. So now transitioning from our afternoon sunset look to now our daytime high noon look. We took the CTO off, so now we're getting general daylight, and that automatically gave us a fully different mood. The second thing I did was I opened up the left window. By opening it, we have given another source of light, essentially. These shears aren't the most diffusion you've ever seen, but they are adding a little bit more softness to the overall room and giving us just a little bit more spread. We replaced our hard light with a panel light. In fact, we have two panel lights in a double yoke just to give us a little bit of ambiance. If you look down here on the bottom left of the frame, we've got exposure on this wood floor, adding a lot of dimension to the room. I did find that it was a little too bright. And so what I did in camera was I lowered my ISO down from 500 down to 250 so that brought down the overall ambience while keeping the sources hot. It's really subtle, subtle changes, a thing I like to call, you guys know it, let me hear it, let me hear it. Tway, cut the tway. <laughs> now we're moving on to our overcast. It's kind of sad, a little bit more somber. We opened the Venetian blinds up completely to bring more ambient light in. Another change we made was we took the window to the left and we closed and sealed that off completely. I want it to be really muted, cognizant of a overcast day. What we got going on underside this setup? Uh, 12 by Ultra Bounce as the back tent. On the window, we actually taped up a quarter grid silk on it. So the reason why we did this is because anytime we're thinking soft light, I always think book light. What better way to get a soft light than creating a big book light around the window? 
Not only is it good for overcast, but it's also great for hiding the details outside that you may not want to see in frame. The nice thing about this is it's pretty easy if you break it down to, you know, the basics. It's just a white sheet and another white sheet and then a light in between. So if you just put it up against the window, blow it out on camera, it should look pretty good. When you go outside and it's overcast, it has that kind of muggy, foggy type of feel. So why not add and enhance our interior scene with adding haze? You know I love haze. Tway tries to get me to turn that haze off. Tway, I've turned that haze on. <laughs> No, but it fits really well in this scene because it's cloudy outside, you know, it just gives you the idea. We're gonna get our talent in here in just a little bit and make our last looks final and hit record. So for Blue Hour, we didn't really change much with the lighting. We almost kept it the same. We did add another p 600 c into uh, Ultra Bounce, pushing light through that left window as well to fill in a little bit. We did gels already, but I do want to try to change the color of the light fixtures. We're going to jump on Cytus Link and dial in the specific kind of blue we want. The other thing we did to really emphasize that blue and to make it really pop is turned on both practicals, changed those to a very warm 3200 Kelvin Tungsten. I'm a huge fan of practicals and I'm glad we're using them in this scene. Since it's morning time and it's, you know, he's just getting up, we wanted it to be a little bit more approachable. So up here on the fan, we literally just put up an MT tube, dropping down a nice little tungsten on our talent here on Chris. We also have a fill board over here, returning just a little bit more exposure on Chris's face. We're about to get into it. That was the last thing I wanted to talk about before we hit record. Let's do it. That looked great. That's a wrap, guys. Yeah. Let's do it. That's looking good, Thank Kevin. You. Thank you, man. Credit to the crew. We had an amazing crew today. Mm -hmm. Man, that was a lot of fun. Daylight. 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 Who knew it could be so versatile? Now four different options that you can try out. Each one has a different emotional quality, and now your actor is in an environment that is conducive to that emotion that you want to pull from your script. I think we got a question, right? Yes, we got a common question, and it comes from Rodrigo Landa Romero. How would you shoot several scenes when traveling, considering the tight schedule? Just keeping things simple. There's no need to overcomplicate. Come up with a formula or a theme on how you want to light. Replicate that formula on every location and scene that you do so you're not trying to recreate the wheel on every location. Thank you so much for joining. I had such a great time today, but unfortunately, I gotta go back in and eat the rest of the crafty. You guys don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. Sounds good. I love you, buddy. I, <laughs> I love, love you. you. I love you. I love you, my All right, God. guys, see you later. See you next time.
Hey everyone, Brandon from the A-Team here, and today we are excited to finally, officially debut, release, and ship the elusive MT Pro. Now, some of you may have seen the MT Pro already at NAB or Cine Gear or an interview that we did with Cine D or New Shooter, but today we're going to give you all the specs, all the details, and all the official documentation, websites going live, pricing is available for everything you need to know about the MT Pro and why it deserves a place in your everyday lighting toolkit. So I'm going to break down all the features here and then we're going to move next door to the other part of our studio where we're going to actually show you how to use the MT Pro in practice. We built a demo scene and a, we PD'd an entire set so we can show you how you can use the MT Pro to light a real life environment. And then we're going to move outside of our studio over to a video that we shot with our friend and cinematographer Clifton Stommel where he was inspired by the capabilities of the MT Pro and he used the inspiration to write an entire short around the product. And basically, we're gonna go through and show you the process of ideation and shooting that short film and even a sneak peek preview from it. And then lastly, that's not all. We have so many things going on today's live stream. Lastly, we're gonna end it up with a conversation with our dear friend Kazuo Okuda, a professional commercial cinematographer who has shot pretty much every single robo shot you've ever seen in an Aperture commercial and has shot for brands like Tom Ford, Bulgari, Giorgio Armani. So if you want to meet the man who is behind all those cool Aperture robotic camera shots as well as the product cinematographer behind brands like those, stay tuned to the end where we're going to talk about his journey and his thoughts on the MT Pro. So before we get into all of that, let's roll the commercial. All in one. Details, they're what define your creations and the way the world sees them. And we know how important they are to your vision and how important it is to be precise. Because the road to perfection is riddled with hurdles and setbacks. And sometimes, all it takes is just one simple solution. So let's cut to the chase. Meet Aperture's first ever tube light, the MT Pro. 36 pixels in one foot, with CRMX in any color. Unleash your creativity with one or many. Leading the industry in pixel density, the MT Pro produces ultra-smooth chases and effects unmatched by any other light. On top of the nine system effects and our other mini fixtures, the MT Pro's multiple drivers can produce seven pixel effects, like rainbow or a hyper-realistic pixel fire. At well under one pound, the new mini tube utilizes built-in magnets or two quarter 20 inch threads to mount virtually anywhere. Whether it's there in the shot or just out of frame, the MT Pro lives comfortably as an accent anywhere on set. Enjoy hours of runtime with the built-in battery and watch your shots come to life. And to achieve the perfect look with a seamless workflow, wireless control is at the forefront. Change the color, effect, or intensity in seconds with Cytus Link Direct App Control. Or program your setup down to the pixel with the industry standard Lumen Radio CRMX built in. Harnessing the same color technology as our Novas in a compact fixture, you can unlock rich, saturated hues with access to over 90% of the Rec 2020 color space. Fine-tune your white point with the new advanced HSI mode or dial in your ideal amount of red, green, and blue. And whether you're pinpointing your color with XY or adjusting anywhere between 2000 Kelvin to 10,000 Kelvin, you can shoot with confidence, knowing that your light feels true to life, with SSI scores of 73 in daylight and 84 in tungsten. But for all the features packed into the mini light, at the end of the day, it really comes down to one thing. How the light looks. Just the right softness, right out of your pocket. Because when it all works together, your imagination takes center stage. One network, one system, 
one vision with endless potential. And we're back. And I'm here to talk to you again about the Pixel Perfect MT Pro. Now, if you've been following Aperture and Amran for a long time, you'll know that in the past couple of years, we've released an insane flurry of products. I think our lighting catalog goes up to about 30 individual lights right now, and then about 20 modifiers. So we have over 50 products in the Aperture and Amaran ecosystem, which is a mind boggling number. I think that's just individual lights, not including kits of lights like the MC4 and 12 light kits. So to keep coming out with products is something that we are constantly trying to do to really keep innovating and make sure that we're not slowing down. We don't want anything to slow us down. And if you remember back in March of this year, we released the Amaran T2C and T4C, the first tubes under the Amaran product line. And we designed these tubes specifically with indie filmmakers and content creators in mind, trying to optimize everything we could for their workflow, including tons of mounting options, including a hot swap, including a replaceable battery, including direct side sync app control, and a lightweight ultimately fixture that was one of the lightest tube, tube lights on the market. That was everything that we imbued into the Amaran T2C and T4C. But when we made the MT Pro and we conceptualized the MT Pro, we went down a different path. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Everything that went into the MT Pro and the core pillars of what makes it a great light. So if you want to take a look at everything right now on the screen for a quick TLDR of what makes the MT Pro so great, here's a quick overview. Here's all the specs. The MT Pro has 7.5 watts of pixel mappable RGBWW output. That's 50% more than the Aperture MC and about 50% more output in terms of lux as well at 614 lux at 0.5 meters. We of course have Aperture's high standards for color quality, CRI, TLCI, SSI, all that jazz with a 2000 to 10,000 Kelvin color temperature, advanced HSI with white point variability, XY control through Cytus Link and in the future DMX. And of course, as a pro mini series light, the Lumen Radio CRMX integration inside this light. So it's not only Cytus Link direct app controllable, it's also Lumen Radio CRMX compatible. So there's a lot that goes into everything that we decided to make here with the MT Pro. And that's what we're gonna talk about. Again, here's a quick TLDR, but now we're moving onwards to talk about the four pillars that make up the MT Pro. So the, when we were designing the MT Pro, we heard a lot of feedback from gaffers, cinematographers, lighting technicians, operators, and content creators alike. And filtering out every, all of their requests to make the ultimate lighting product, we honed down on four key pillars for this light right here. And that includes, first off, pixel control. And that leads to the MT Pro's industry-leading pixel density. The MT Pro uh, has 36 pixels all in its one-foot design. And this was something that was important for a lot of our users. They wanted something that if we went beyond making point source lights like the 300D Mark II and the 600D Pro and the 600X Pro to make a fixture that had pixel control, pixel mappability, and can add dimensionality to their scene. This is before the Nova P600C came out, which was the first Aperture product with multiple light engines in control of it and the ability to pixel map those light engines. So this was before we ventured into that territory. And Along this time, everyone wanted more control over their scenes to add dimensionality to their lighting, to add more effects for chase sequences, for lighting effects, in-camera gags, practical, ga practical gags, but also just to shape their scene a little bit more thoroughly, which would be great for music videos, product cinematography, you name it. Pretty much every form of filmmaking, every form of photography, every form of video creation has a use for pixel control and pixel mappability, as long as you can make it as easy as possible. So that was something that we knew when we ventured outside of the point source light territory to integrate multiple light engines. So that's check one and pillar one for the MT Pro. The second thing that they of course wanted us to focus on was maintaining a high standard of color quality. And that's something that for us was a given to maintain aperture standard of high color quality lighting, especially in our full color fixtures by utilizing the same RGBWW foundation as the P600C, the 600C Pro, the B7C, we were going to maintain the high standard of color quality that you've come to expect from aperture fixtures to make sure that you get skin tones that represent accurately on camera and that give, make your subject look as pristine as possible. So pillar two also had to have high color quality. Now, number three was, was where things started to get a little bit interesting. 
because what people were asking for or what people didn't know that they were asking for yet was a mini design that was compact and versatile. Because large format lights have existed on the market forever. Two foot, four foot tube lights, large panels like the P600C, even larger panels like a Sky Panel 360, large lights like HMIs or the 1200D Pro with its 1200 watt COB. There are super large lights on the market, but what was lacking and where the hole was, where there was a big hole, was in compact lighting, in small form factor lighting that had the professional levels of control that everyone needed. So it couldn't just be small like the M9, it had to have be small and provide them with professional functionality. Color, CRMX connectivity, compact design, ease of use, all these things were super important in designing something that could fit into tight spaces, that can be tucked into car visors, that can be hidden under cabinets, hidden under shelves, kept just out of frame as an eye light, used in a variety of situations because of its slim profile. So that's something that was pillar three. We wanted to make whatever light we produced something that was compact and fit inside of a unique form factor and design. And lastly, while Citus Link was something that was became super prolific pretty much overnight with everyone from our content creators to filmmakers, friends, all using Citus Link to control their aperture lights from the 300D Mark II to the MC to the P600C. We also heard that one thing was missing on the mini series lights, especially in that compact form factor that I just mentioned, and that was Lumen Radio CRMX connectivity. Professional wireless connectivity that fit into everyone's DMX workflows and existing workflows and fit right into the ease of use that everyone expected to come with DMX, especially for complex sets that had tens if not hundreds of lights. That's where DMX connectivity and DMX control became super important. So for a light that we wanted to maintain a compact form factor with slim profile, we couldn't add ethernet ports, we couldn't add XLR ports, we couldn't even add mini XLR ports. We wanted to keep everything as slim as possible. So of course, we went with Lumen Radio CRMX, the industry standard. So the four pillars of the MT Pro being its pixel control, its pixel density, aperture color quality, its mini design and versatility, and CRMX connectivity. That's what we're gonna go into and address why we, how we addressed each of these requirements and needs from the entire filmmaking community, from cinematographers, lighting technicians, to content creators, all alike. So let's dive into the pixel control of the MT Pro, because like I mentioned, it's pretty crazy with the industry leading pixel density of 36 pixels inside of its one foot form factor. And just to illustrate how crazy this is, there are the, one of the most popular industry standard lights for tube lights that is in about a two foot range comes with, the, with about eight pixels of control. So that's four and a half times as much control in about half the size, 36 pixels in one foot. And this means that everything is incredibly dense, packed in such that each step, each pixel is only 0.8 centimeters, 80 millimeters, or a third of an inch from another pixel set of pixels. So that means everything is packed together with a smooth stepping gradation along the entirety of the two. This allows us to create a lot of unique effects. For one, the gradients that our lights create are super smooth. If you see it in the rainbow effect right now in the tube, you can see how smooth everything is. You don't see large steps and large blocks of light. What you see is a gradient that traverses across the entire length of the tube. And this is accomplished because of how tightly we packed all the pixels together, 36 of them, again, in one foot. Additionally, this results in a lot of evenness. By placing the pixels all together, even if you're using them as a one single light engine, as one single even white light in CCT mode, what this is gonna give you is a super even output across the board. Because everything is packed so closely together, you're going to minimize any artifacting that you get from being able to see individual LEDs and individual pixels through to the fusion, which is important whether you're using the camera as an in-camera in practical, the light as an in-camera practical to see it directly in camera, whether you're using it as an eye light or whether you're using it in product cinematography where you're gonna see that clean reflection on that glossy metallic surface, you want everything to be as even as possible. And then in addition to that, our engineers poured a lot of time into making sure that these things could traverse, they can transition between the pixels as quickly as possible as well. It's not just that the light had to be smooth and produce smooth gradients, it had to create these effect sequences and transition between the pixels at a high speed. So if you ever get a chance to play with the pixel effects on the MT Pro, you're gonna be able to see that in some of the lighting modes, like 
color chase, you're going to be able to set the chase speed to 640 centimeters per second, which is way faster than you would probably ever need. But for context, the MT Pro is 30 centimeters in length. 640 centimeters is over 21 times the length of the MT Pro. So that's how fast everything can transition and everything can work uh, inside those pixel effects. And that's just the built-in designs that we have. This is all comes from the insane amount of engineering we've done inside the light engine for the MT Pro. From picking out the chipset, which was our foundational RGBWW chipset, to placing them and figuring out how to use the microcontrollers to make everything as dense as possible while still reducing heat and making sure that you can get the best effect out of your small compact light fixture. Now, because it has multiple pixels, it also gives you the additional control. So beyond just the nine built-in system effects that you get out of our other compact LED lights like the MC and the Accent B7C, which include pulsing, cop car, lightning, party lights, faulty bulb, TV, fireworks, and fire, you also get seven built-in system pixel effects. So this includes one pixel chase, two pixel chase, three pixel chase, rainbow, which you see right here, color fade, color cycle, and pixel fire. You can actually see color fade and color cycle in action in some of the MC, MT Pros that Alec programmed right here in the back. To show you how versatile the MT Pro is because we didn't have to set everything up in DMX to do this. We didn't even have to use Citus Link to do all of this. We did this all on the back of the MT Pro just using the manual controls. And that's what the benefit of pixel effects is. The benefit of pixel effects is it simplifies your workflow and allows you to achieve these fantastic looking chase sequences and chase effects without ever having to open complex DMX software. We wanted to make sure that you have these controls at your fingertips, whether you need something that is like one or two pixel chase where you're taking one or two pixels and having it traverse across the screen, the entire length of the tube while setting a background color. We actually have three pixel chase running on this MT Pro on the top over here to give you an example of what you can do with the three pixel chase effect. And in addition, you have color fade and color cycle, which is what these tubes in the back are running on to create large swatches and larger blocks of light. But most uniquely, there's also pixel fire, which we're gonna showcase to you a little bit later on as well. With pixel fire, there's a distinct difference between the fire effect that you get out of the system effects and the pixel fire effects. Because with pixel fire, you get to be able to use the individual light engines of the MT Pro to create different pockets of light and to splash the different colors and different intensities of light at different varying rates, utilizing the multiple light engines to give you a much more naturalistic shadow and light quality on your subject to enhance the cinematic realism of your fire effect. But like I said, that's something we'll go and show you just in a little bit when we go over to the demo. Let's talk, now that we talked a lot about the pixel controls, let's talk about this, the light engines in general and the color output. Now, if you want to use these pixel effects, like I mentioned, you can control them right on the back of the MT Pro, but you also have the ability to use them in Citus Link. So pixel effects will come to Citus Link at the end of the month for all platforms, including iOS, Android, and iPad. But if you want a quick preview of what the interface looks like on uh, your phone, you can check out the video that we have on screen right here. This is showing Citus Link pixel effects on my Android Google Pixel 6. And when you get your MT Pro, make sure to check Citus Link for any over the air updates to make sure that your firmware is up to date because we're constantly releasing firmware updates, especially for the first or two, second, first or second batches, they're gonna get firmware updates as well. The latest firmware update brings you things like 0.1% intensity control, advanced HSI, as well as finalizing the pixel effects library, and of course, allowing you to utilize Citus Link pixel effects once this update comes towards the end of the month. So make sure once you get your MT Pro to hook it up to Citus Link right away to get you that firmware update. Now, moving on to color quality. Color quality is gonna be a pretty short section because Everyone already knows what to expect when it comes to the color controls and the color quality that we hold ourselves to. We hold ourselves to a pretty high standard, if I say so myself, so that's what we're going to be talking about. In the color modes, beyond effects modes, you're going to be able to utilize the MT Pro pretty much exactly like you would with a Nova P600C, including CTT plus green magenta shift, allowing you to pick your color temperature as well as tune in your plus or minus green to match your scene as well as, of course, advanced HSI with white point adjustability. What this means is that in addition to hue, saturation, and intensity control, you also have the ability to adjust the CCT that you're desaturating towards. So you can actually set it to 3200 Kelvin or 5600 Kelvin or 7500 Kelvin to make sure that you're desaturating to whatever you need to match the rest of the lights in your scene. In addition, you also have RGB tunability with 
once you get that 0.1% intensity control, that's a, technically a billion combinations you can get out of your RGB tunability. Not that you're ever going to need all of those 1 billion combinations, but you can access that directly on the back of the MT Pro in the Citus Link app or over DMX. And lastly, of course, as a Pro fixture, it features XY compatibility as well. At the moment, XY compatibility is featured through the Citus Link mobile app. So you're going to use Citus Link direct app control to connect to the MT Pro and access SY, XY that way. But a firmware update will be coming as well in the future that allows you to have a DMX profile for XY for the MT Pro. Now, moving on to the color. Now that it you know it covers over 90% of the REC 2020 color space, it also covers the same CCT range as the Accent B7C and the Nova P600C, which is 2000 Kelvin all the way up to 10,000 Kelvin, matching the widest CCT range we offer in our RGB WW color family. And of course, throughout this color temperature range, we're delivering as stellar quality as we can give you with pretty standard metrics for what you've come to expect from Aperture. High CRI of 95, high CLCI of 98, a high D56 SSI of 73, and a tungsten SSI of 84. And these are all numbers. And what it really means is that this is going to match really well with your Nova P600C, with your B7C, with your LS600C Pro. It's going to match everything else in the ecosystem to deliver those skin tones that you've come to expect from our Aperture fixtures. So if you're happy with the P600C, if you're happy with the 600C Pro, I'm pretty sure you're going to be happy with the color quality you're going to get out of the MT Pro as well. Now, moving on and out of the light engines and the light output, let's talk about what makes the MT Pro more unique as a whole, and that's its mini design, its versatility, and why it's called the MT. The MT stands for Mini Tube, and is, again, the first tube light under the Aperture product line and Aperture brand, aside from the Amaran tubes like the T2C and T4C. And we gave it this distinction because it's part of the Mini series, focusing on its compact form factor and compact design, making sure that everything was tuned towards creating a small, lightweight fixture. So this was, like I mentioned, so that it could be easily hidden out of sight, hidden in frame as an in-camera practical, hidden just in the visor of a car, hidden in a bunch of different places because of its not only slim form factor, but overall compact and lightweight design. Weighing in at only 391 grams, which is about 0.86 pounds, so less than one pound, even with its included 15.5 watt hour battery. This allows it to run the MT Pro at 7.5 watts of max output at approximately two hours until the, it runs out of juice. And once your MT Pro runs out of juice, you can charge it right back up with the included USB Type-C charging cable that is included with every single MT Pro. And it charges with a 5 volt 2 amp charger in approximately 120 minutes as well. So that's again, two hours. So just as one of your MT Pros is about to run out of juice, you can swap it in with the one that you just left on charge to make sure that you're running an efficient set. In addition, that's battery power is what makes it so versatile because it can be hidden in so many places without any extra cables, any extra wiring. That battery power combined with its, co combined with its compact design and its ultra thin bezels is what allows it to blend into any environment without any wires and ha without having to think about any of those things. To give you a frame of reference, when I say ultra thin bezels, I mean ultra thin, razor thin. The bezels of the MT Pro are only three millimeters thick, which is 1% of the length of the MT Pro. That means for a 30 centimeter MT Pro, 90%, 98% of the MT Pro is diffusion and outputting a light emitting surface. So that means we're focusing on giving you the most light quality and minimizing any obstructions to your set, to your set design and making sure that everything looks like it should. Focusing on the light, not on how big the end caps are or how bulky things might be or how distracting things might be minimizing the distractions so you focus exactly on the MT Pro. And with its ultra thin bezels, you can mount it pretty much anywhere. In the commercial, you saw us mount it to aluminum speed rail with zip ties, but if you have something that's made of steel or something that's ferromagnetic, you can use the built-in neodymium magnets to mount, that, to mount the MT Pro to those as well. And if you're lacking steel plates, anything that's ferromagnetic, you can also use the built-in quarter 20 mounts that is located on the end cap of the MT Pro as well as on the bottom to mount it with the included mini tabletop tripod. Every single MT Pro ships inside this EVA padded foam case alongside a mini tabletop tripod with a quarter 20 screw thread. 
to make sure that you can set it up for quick tabletop shots to use it as a sturdy grip and to make sure that you're ready to go right out of the gate because it also comes with a 45 degree fabric light control grid inside this case. It packs right in with it. So this means that once you get your MT Pro, it is literally ready to shoot with right out of the box. Whether you need to mount it somewhere safe, keep it stable, or you need to control the amount of spill and the beam angle of your MT Pro, everything is ready to go right away. And that's something that we really wanted to take into focus with the MT Pro because we want this to be a part of your everyday lighting toolkit. Not just your once off or your twice off lighting toolkit, but your everyday lighting toolkit. Something you can have in your back pocket, just like your MC. Now we've talked a lot about how you can mount the MT Pro and how you can utilize it and how you can put it in your scene. But once it's in your scene, especially if it's an in-camera practical, how can you control it? Now, again, we've mentioned Citus Link a lot, but the pro part of MT Pro is in relation to the fact that it is a Lumen Radio CRMX compatible fixture. Every single one of our DMX professional operators said the MT Pro needs to have CRMX. It needs to have DMX compatibility so it can integrate into my existing workflow. I don't want to have to leave my, uh, my DMX workflow, leave Blackout to operate the MT Pro inside a slink. And that's perfectly fine for those high level workflows, especially when you're dealing with, again, tens or even hundreds of light fixtures. You want everything to be on the same ecosystem. So that's why with the MT Pro, we integrated it in with Lumen Radio's most recent technology, its latest technology, the Timo 2 chip. And that's the same chip that's in the Nova P600C, the Lightstorm 600C Pro, the 600D Pro, and pretty much every other Lumen Radio or CRMX enabled professional level fixture that you're gonna see on set. The MT Pro features the same chip. So that means it can sync into your workflow just as easily. Hand it off to your DMX operator, your DMX programmer, and they're gonna be able to sync it up into your scene. So whether you're using it with wireless control like we did inside of our scene, inside of our commercial today, where you saw with the ring lights and the about 20 MT Pros all operating in pixel mode, all operating over Lumen Radio, or you're using it in a wired mode, you're good to go. For wired connectivity, if you want something that's stable, that also provides power to the MT Pro while you're using it, we're also going to be releasing an Aperture Active USB Type-C to 5-pin XLR DMX adapter. This adapter has a USB Type-C connector to connect to the MT Pro, has a USB Type-C input so it can accept the charging signal as well, as well as has two DMX ports, a 5-pin XLR in and out, to give you wired connectivity with your MT Pro. Now you see it in the, pic in the picture here, we have it mounted to the MT Pro using one of the magnets screwed into the back of the adapter, but you can mount it in a variety of different ways as well once it comes out for release. But basically it goes to show that in addition to CRMX, you do have, if you need, wired DMX and RDM compatibility. And of course, when you're looking at the DMX profiles for the MT Pro, it can get pretty crazy. At the time of a release, we have 19 profiles for the MT Pro, everything from standard CCT, RGB, and 8-bit mode, which controls the entire fixture, to multiple light engine control. And this is where it gets a little bit nitpicky and a little bit granular. As you can see, at the ends of each of these light engine profiles, you can see P4, P6, P9, P12, P18, and P36. That represents how many pixels you have control over in that DMX profile. So if you don't need control over all 36, which in the light engine CCT RGB profile with 36 pixels, it only takes two MT Pros to pretty much fill up an entire DMX universe. So if you want to downsize that, fit more empty pros into your universe, and basically simplify your workflow overall, you can condense it down to four pixels, six pixels, nine pixels, 12 pixels. Basically, the MT Pro will condense them for you using the adjacent light engines and make your workflow as simple as possible. Now, if you want your workflow to be even simpler, especially if you don't work with DMX on the regular, of course, you have Citus Link Direct App Control. And this is something that, again, is in every single Aperture and Amaran fixture on the market at the moment. The MT Pro connects not only to your smartphone or your tablet, but also to every single other Citus mesh enabled light on your set to make sure that that mesh signal is super stable and strong. And with Citus Link, you can do so many different things you can't even do with just a standard CRMX or DMX app. For example, with Color Picker, you can pick the exact color using your smartphone's camera and transmit it to the MT Pro. With Source Match, you can match the white balance that your camera sees and send that to the MT Pro with plus green magenta shift as well. And if you want to go beyond that, you also have your Citus Pro effects like manual effects or even picker effects where you can again use your smartphone's camera to live transmit or record a lighting effect and then send that to your MT Pro. Whether you're using 
Magic Program or Music Effects, which syncs the, your light up with live music, the possibilities are becoming more and more endless with Citus Link because we're constantly investing new and new technology into the Citus ecosystem from the hardware in our lights to the software on the app. It's only going to keep growing and the feature set, I can tell you, knowing what's coming, it's going to blow your mind. Now again, once you receive your MT Pro, make sure to connect it to Citus Link and connect it to uh, check for any OTA firmware updates to make sure that your MT Pro is up to date. Now, I've talked a lot, we've covered plenty of different use cases uh, for the MT Pro, showing you, talking about its light engine control, its light output, its design, how you can mount it, how you can control it through wireless connectivity. But lastly, let's talk about a few place, ways you can use the light. Let's see the light in action. So here are a handful of examples we pulled together for how the MT Pro could be used. For example, as an in-camera practical like you saw in our commercial, whether you're mounting it to the back of a wall, using the magnets, using the screws, or using our quarter 20 eyelet and fishing line to hang it in space. That's like we did in our uh, commercial. You can be used the MT Pro as a great in-camera practical because of its lightweight form factor, because of its wireless control, because of its pixels, it makes it all, and because of its internal battery. Those, all those feature sets make it a great candidate for an in-camera practical. But just like you can use it in camera, you can also use it on camera, literally on your camera, when it's mounted to the hot shoe or a cold shoe using the quarter 20 thread and a ball mount or a Noga arm. This allows you to get that nice fill light that you might expect from an on-camera light, especially because it is a wrappy one-foot tube. This provides you an innately soft fill light for your subject to make sure that everything looks really, really even and to give the extra little boost to, their, to your subject. Whether you're using it as a fill or as an eye light, you can use it as an on-camera eye light or even an off-camera eye light like we're showing you in this video right here where we're both providing fill to the scene and also providing that little glint of color in the subject's eye to make sure that it really pops out in your scene. And as a linear light that has pixel control that is super smooth with its pixel density, the MT Pro is a great candidate for product cinematography and one of my favorite ways to use it as well. Because of that linear shape and form factor with the even output, you're able to get super smooth reflections out of all your materials, especially your glossy metal materials. That's where the MT Pro and its design really comes into play with those minimal bezels, super even output. And if you need to, no matter how large or small your fixture is or how large or small your subject is, you can use the pixels to create different lighting sequences and chase effects for your subject, or even hone in to that super small area if you're controlling it over DMX or wirelessly. And lastly, another way you can use the MT Pro, but this is not by far and away not the only ways you can use the MT Pro, is as a close-up or practical lighting element. Here we have Alec using the motivation from the Accent B7C inside the lampshade to wrap the light further around the subject using the MT Pro, holding it just out of frame, Hollywooding it off camera to make sure that the subject really pops out of the scene. These are just five examples of how you can use the MT Pro in practice. It's by far and away not the only limitations of it. The, real, the limitations of the MT Pro are pretty much endless. You can use the MT Pro in so many different situations. Now, we've talked about these use cases and I'm sure all of you have a lot of questions. Namely, when's it gonna ship? And how much is it? The MT Pro is shipping today, August 4th, and it's going to be available for only $199. That's right. We were able for $199 to pack in 36 pixels into this razor thin bezel one foot frame with Lumen Radio CRMX integrated with an included mini tripod with a collapsible light control grid and an EVA padded case. All of that for $199. So, Make sure to go online in the Aperture store or check in with your local dealer to put an order for the MT Pro now. Now, I've, it's time for me to stop talking so much about all the things that I've prepared. It's time to answer a few of your questions that we've been collecting along the way. So, Tway, hit me with what you got. All right. The first question is, can I individually control the pixels on the MT Pro manually or do I need external controls? So the first question, can I control the pixels on the MT Pro manually or do I need external controls? Citus Link, DMX, CRMX. You can use the pixel effects on the MT Pro 
to control these pixels manually. However, you don't have individual control over each one of these 36 pixels. Like I can't say that I wanna set pixel number 24 and pixel number 13 and pixel number 17 to a specific thing using the built-in picture uh, controls on the MT Pro because we felt that would get too complicated for the smaller interface. However, with the advance of pixel effects, you are gonna be able to do that with Citus Link. And of course, you can achieve that control through CRMX or DMX as well in that 36 pixel light engine control mode. Nice. And the second question is, how bright is the MT compared to an MC? Great, second question was, how bright is the MT Pro compared to an MC? So that, like I mentioned, the output of the MT Pro is 7.5 watts, which is about 50% more than the original Aperture MC, which also gives it about 50% more lux output than the MC as well. Measuring in at 614 lux at 0.5 meters, I believe the MC comes in at 400 lux at 0.5 meters. And compared to something like the T2C, which is about 20 watts of output, so that's almost three times that of the MT Pro, the T2C is also almost three times the output of the MT Pro as well, coming in about 467 lux at one meter compared to the MT Pro's 167 lux at one meter. And then will the MT come in longer length than a Pro? That's a great question and a question I've been seeing a lot on the internet. Will the MT Pro come in longer lengths than one foot? I've talked a lot throughout this presentation about the fact that the MT Pro is so compact and that everything is inside this one foot form factor. And it's gonna stay that way for the MT. That's what it means to be a mini tube light, something that's small and compact. But will something come in the future? Who knows, I can't say right now. All right, how about, um, can I attach two MTs together to make a tube? That's another great question, which was, can I attach two MCs to MT Pros together to create a two foot tube since they only come in the one foot form factor? And you can do that really easily, I think in two ways off the top of my head. One is to take a double ended quarter 20 screw and screw it into one and the end caps of the MT Pro and then screw it into the end cap of another MT Pro to basically create a two foot tube or to grab a steel plate that is two foot long and use the MT Pro's magnets to attach to that steel plate, which may be easier for you to rig depending on what your situation is. But either of those scenarios and either of those methods is my first intuition to give you a two foot tube using two MT Pros. Nice. And then lastly, um, will the MT Pro be available in like multi light goods? Okay, cool. We have one last question before we move on to our next segment, which is, will the MT Pro be available in multi light kits? At the moment, the MT Pro is sold as a single light, but, but we're obviously looking into the prospect of creating multi-light kits for the MT Pro. So you in the audience, tell us, let us know, what would you like to see in an MT Pro multi-light kit? How many light fixtures would you like to see? What functionality do you think the kit needs to have? Does the kit need to include any other accessories beyond the ones that we have right here? We'll compile all that feedback and see what we can do to create what we think is the most ideal kit for the MT Pro. So be sure to leave your questions in the comments. In fact, continue to leave your questions in the comments even if I'm stopping answering any questions right now because Ian and everyone else on the After Team will continue answering you live and in real time to make sure that everything that you want to know is covered. And if not, continue messaging us on Instagram, on Facebook, and join the Aperture user group and ask questions there and we'll be sure to get back to you to make sure that everything you want to know about the MT Pro is told and is published and to make sure that you know everything that uh, is confusing you or is interesting you and intriguing you about the MT Pro. Now, while you keep doing that, what we're gonna do is move on to the other side of our studio, move on next door and show you the demo scene that we have prepared to show you how to use the MT Pro in practice, how to use the MT Pro on a set environment. So while you keep leaving your questions in the comments, I'm gonna head over there. So I'll see you in a second. and we're back on the other side of the studio showing you how to use the MT Pro in a practical set environment. I'm here with Tui Dung, our creative content director from Aperture, and we're gonna talk to you about how you can use the MT Pro to get that last little bit of cinematic quality 
in the last 60 seconds before your AD calls action. Because one of the best benefits of having mini lights in general, whether it's the MT Pro, the MC, or the Accent B7C, our gaffers and cinematographers tell us time and time again, is the ability in the last 60 seconds before you roll, because you know that your scene is just missing that extra little bit of cinematic quality. How do you achieve that? Oftentimes, mini LEDs come to the rescue because of their built-in battery power, because they're super easy to set up, and because they're super easy to hide. So we're gonna be talking about how you can do that today with the MT Pro. So Tway, before we get into all the lighting, set the scene for us. Yeah, we're here on set, and we have um, Malia over here rocking out on her guitar. The story is she's um, writing a love song for a high school crush. We are in an 80s teenager's bedroom, kind of like Back to the Future, kind of like um, Bill and Ted, Friday the 13th, that kind of vibe. And just to kind of show you what we have going on lighting wise, we're pretty much 80% of the way there. We have the LS600C Pro up here, set to tungsten on a lantern, skirted off. So we just get this nice key on Malia right here. We have this nice P300C over here giving us this like magenta backsplash because why not, you know? We, we want to add some style, we want to add some color, some flair to the whole scene. Um, and then we also have that light up there, the Aperture LS60X with full CTO because we want it a little bit warmer to get like this nice gritty retro um, sort of vintage look, uh, like we're in like a basement type of bedroom. And finally, the last uh, other light really is just that B7C over there uh, set to tungsten, really warm, kind of giving us a nice splash in the environment. But obviously that's not going to be all the practicals that we're going to be uh, doing on set because um, like Brandon was saying, that last 20% like ups the production value by like 10 times. And we're going to show you all the different ways with the empty pros that we have going on to really give you that, um, that extra thing to make the shot sing, you know? So I think the first thing, uh, honestly, is that um, as like a cinematographer, I'm thinking like, if this uh, LS60X up here wasn't on because maybe we're on location, let's strike it off real quick. We need some dimensionality to our subject right here. Uh, one of the things that I was thinking of was like, you could take this um, light that was already rigged uh, over here on a C-stand, the MD Pro, you can arm it out and everything like that. And I will kind of land like right here. And then I'll set it to the exact same color temperature and gel that we had over there with the LS60X. And I'm gonna turn it up. How does this look, Brandon? So here is an example of how it's wide in camera. If I'm wide, I'm gonna zoom in so I can frame out the MT Pro. But mm -hmm. that light that we lost, that hair light that we lost is now coming back and pulling Malia out of the background, which is especially important because her hair is black and the background is super, super dark. So if we had no other light, if you wanna pan off the MT Pro real quick. Yeah. We have no other light on set and showing there we don't have any separation of her from the background. But by even bringing just this one small light set to really, really low and being able to reflect off of her black hair, it increases the amount of separation by a ton. It adds so much and obviously you can see I feel completely safe arming this out with a, with a C-stand with a baby pin to quarter 20 adapter because of the quarter 20 threads on the MT Pro that this is going to work for uh, something like uh, this medium close-up that we have or even like more close-up too. Uh, from in that matter. Yeah, but I still feel like something's missing from the scene. What can we do to add in a little bit of extra pop to the background? We have this pink side light for separation. We have this hair light, but is there something else we can do to the background? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do, um, if you actually uh, go on your controls for this, we have this already pre-programmed to Citus link. Uh, I want, give me like uh, 6,000 Kelvin um, at like 10%. Got and it. as you can see, we collaborated with the production designer to make this possible. We had this nice, uh, nice now showing sign that's a little bit translucent and we're making it pop with the MT Pro and it works perfectly as a practical um, production design element in the background over there. Exactly, now it works great in camera and it, bring, it gives us a little more pop to the scene, which again, because the background was so dark, it looked a little bit lifeless and now we're able to add more dimensionality and more uh, color to the scene overall. And this, all this, ha we all we had to do was add this just little MT Pro to the scene, hide it behind this now showing sign, which again, we could have done with a few MCs, but the MC, it's already a one foot tube. So we just have to stick it behind the sign. And I know when I've been on set, this is totally something that happens. We already have existing production design 
we already have things on set that we can use to motivate additional light and add more color and more pop to the scene. Um, and that often happens within the last 10, five, even two minutes, right before you call action. Yeah, it just goes to show like that close collaboration as like a cinematographer to a production de designer is super important when you're working on set because it's not only just like making um, a practical element like that, but it's also extending other practicals that we have on set because we have this lamp over here and we kind of want to extend the effect on this dark colored wall. So what are we going to do, Brandon? Yeah, so we have two other MT Pros prepped over here as well. If I want to extend the light from this lamp, all I got to do is in this case, because it is a super slim profile light, connect it behind this steel lamp right here. So it actually magnetizes right to it. And I can hide the MT Pro right behind the lamp. Let me, Let me know over. if I'm in frame or not. Uh, it's a little bit in frame. Let's put it a little bit more to the uh, right. How's Keep that? Going. That's pretty damn good. All okay, right. Okay, cool. So now we've hidden this light behind the lamp that keeps pushing the light further onto the wall, which we want to do because the scene is already pretty dark. The background is pretty dark and we want to add more light to the scene. Now, if I want to motivate a different color, for example, maybe I wanted to play off that lava lamp. So that lava lamp doesn't really emit any light. It just is a nice looking prop in camera. It's a nice look looking piece of production design. But if I want to throw some of that light from the lava lamp onto the wall, all I had to do was set the MT Pro to color fade. It's a color fade between green and blue. And I'm going to set it right behind this lava lamp right here. So Tway, let me know if this is out of frame or not. Oh, yeah. Uh, go to the right a little bit more. Keep going, keep going. Oh, and it's hidden. There we go. Awesome. So mm -hmm. now the MT Pro is in, out of frame. Oh, that looks it's so hidden weird. and it's motivating that lava lamp look, transitioning between blue and green. And I can set it to a variety of different effects, like maybe pixel fire, color chase, color fade to give you that lava lamp look. And I'll probably turn down the intensity a little bit for a real scene. Mm -hmm. But this is just goes to show you how I can utilize the MT Pro hidden behind something as inane as a lava lamp and add that little bit of extra production value to the scene. Because again, I totally, I mean, maybe I'm not working with my production designers close enough, but I totally wouldn't have thought about this until we were on set and the PD said, hey, can we do a little something to bring that lava lamp to life? Yeah, that looks so good. Did you uh, do the pixel effects on board right there? Yes, the I lane? operated that color fade just directly from the back of the MT Pro. Amazing. Okay. So yeah, I think that I think those two ways, perfect extensions of practicals, you know, add so much uh, flavor to the scene, of course. But uh, what if we want to keep going further and make the MT part of the scene without kind of drawing attention to itself? Sure. If I want to make the MT Pro diegetic light, something I might do, Malia is already playing the guitar. I can highlight the stereo a little bit more by adding this MT Pro just underneath the shelf. The shelf happens to have a steel grate. So all I got to do is use the magnets on the MT Pro to highlight it. And, and if we pull back into a wide, we can see that the MT Pro is kind of in frame, but it looks like a diegetic light. It feels natural, even though we're in the 80s. In a modern day scene, it would feel completely natural to see a light like that in frame. And it gives you a lot more pop to that stereo and it brings a lot more attention to that. So if this were a commercial for the stereo, if I really wanted to highlight the musical connection, I can definitely use the MT Pro in this situation to add that extra pool of light for the stereo. Yeah, you would have never thought. It looks like it was, it was part of the production design. So great on there. We, ha we showed like what, four uh, practical uses of the MT Pro right yeah. now. And yeah, I think there's a couple more that we have planned. Like, let's say we're actually finally going in for this close up, right? Okay. So let's, let's why don't we bring in yeah. that camera a little bit into Malia. And I'm going to take this MT Pro that was hiding behind the now showing sign. And, you know, uh, as part of like um, a cinematographer's package, uh, you're always constantly thinking about how to spice up a close-up. One of those elements is definitely an eye light. You want to get that extra 10% uh, of the scene. Uh, if you don't have an eye light, um, that adds like that cinematic flavor to your scene. So if Malia, if you were to be looking more this way for this close-up, um, just off of camera or something like that, you can kind of see that she does have kind of like an eye light up here with the L600C Pro already, but we just need to add a little bit something uh, off camera where we can Hollywood this and that just adds Go down. so much, right? Down, right down, there. Out of, down a little bit more little and bit you're more. out of frame. And I'm out of frame. And if she was looking down, you know, like if she was reading a book, um, it wouldn't be possible just with the light that we have overhead. So this is kind of one of those sneaky ways of just upping your production value so much in this one shot. 
100%. The MT Pro, like we mentioned earlier, is a great eye light, whether you're using it mounted on camera or Hollywooding it off camera. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, you can easily do that. You can mount it on the camera. Um, and that's, that's just like five ways in about five minutes that we showed you how in under 60 seconds, mm -hmm. all those things can be done in under 60 seconds, how to use the MT Pro to add that list, last little bit of cinematic quality to your scene. But you yeah, know, bonus but wait, tip? yeah, there's one more bonus tip. We wanted to show off uh, pixel effects in this scene too. So why don't we uh, change up the scene and throw it over to the setup that we have going on right now. And it's dark, it's a little bit moody and we are in the dark, and if Malia were to grab a candle, because this is part of the scene, you know, it's a, it's a power outage, uh, or maybe she just wants to do some reading in the dark. Um, she's got a candle right here. It's not lit because obviously we don't have a uh, fire marshal on set, so that would be uh, really dangerous. But I want to amplify the effect of the candle. It's not gonna be enough when you're in a close-up. It may be fine for when you're uh, backed off in a wide, mm -hmm. but we are going in for this close-up now and we can lose the candle here and then switch it for something like the MT Pro. So, Brandon, can you do the honors? Yes, I'm gonna uh, turn on pixel, fix, pixel effects. Actually, let me yeah. decrease the exposure real quick so you can see what's happening on screen. The MT Pro is actually utilizing the individual light engines to flicker the fire at various points, so you can see multiple light engines are behaving differently in order to give you a more naturalistic fire effect. So that's what it looks like on the actual fixture, but let's go back to what it looks like on camera. Yeah, you can definitely see that it's very advanced, it's nuanced, it feels natural, more natural than uh, if you were to take like a unit and just have it pulsate in a different color because, you know, obviously we're thinking uh, this is a candle, it shouldn't wrap so much. Um, around Malia and that's where pixel effects and like that uh, extra DMX control uh, comes into play of course. But right now we're just kind of looking at kind of the nuanced fire effect and that looks really good. Awesome. This was a bonus tip. Mm -hmm. Six ways you can use the MT Pro in like 60 seconds to add that little extra bit of spice to your scene. Um, that's just what we wanted, to, just about what we wanted to show you. So before we move on to the next segment of our live stream, did you have any questions or were there any questions that we can answer for our audience? Yeah, I, I think one of the things that naturally comes up is that when you're using mini LEDs right here, mm -hmm. we're talking about um, how to add that extra like 20% in the last 60 seconds, but you kind of want to uh, prepare for that as a professionals on set, you know? So how do I take uh, this MT Pro, for example, or other mini LEDs and prepare for these situations most efficiently on set? Oh, cool. The question is basically, how do I prepare best on set to use the MT Pro to help me out of these tight spots? And the real answer is that sometimes a lot of gaffers and cinematographers come to us and say that they didn't prep ahead of time. This was something they added at the very last second. They pulled it out of their Diddy bag. They pulled it out of their everyday lighting toolkit and they just turned the light on, set it to the setting they needed and went. They shot because they had to roll at that exact second. But if you're already using the MT Pro earlier on in the day, and if you have time to prep the lights earlier on in your show, then having the MT Pro connected to something like Cytoslink, which is what we did here today, or directly to your DMX operating table using the CRMX or using the wired DMX options is a great way to get started. Do it at the top of the day, do it at the top of the show, make sure your MT Pros are always charged. That way, when you run into these tight situations, you don't have to freak out about how do I set up the light for my best practice, especially if you're using pixel effects, or especially if you're using the multiple light engines for control, you wanna be sure to prep all of those things ahead of time. Yeah, it's super important because obviously uh, program pixel effects isn't necessarily uh, the quickest thing uh, to do uh, right before like the most stressful part about getting ready for a shot. And um, when it comes to, but it, it, uh, in the end, uh, it's really uh, fast to apply into your set and one of those other things is that, um, going off of that, like, how does it compare to like a two foot tube, uh, for example? Cause you know, um, this is, uh, it's a mini LED and we want to uh, integrate it to our scene really quickly. We have the, you know, two foots, four foots into our scenes. How yeah, does that so compare? that's a great question is how would the MT Pro differ from using an Amaranth T2C in the situation? And why is using a MT Pro better than using a T2C in pretty much every situation we showed off here. Do you have an answer for us? Well, yeah, off the top of my mind, I mean, um, you can kind of see the way that we rigged the hair light earlier, that it's like really balanced, it's like really low profile. So 
that's like already a big reason that you would use a one foot um, because you just need this like enough extension just for the hair. And obviously when you were putting it behind uh, that lamp, like two, a two foot wouldn't necessarily work out the best way. Oh, because it it's like fit. really, yeah, this is a much more stealthy compared to like that two foot uh, unit. And also when it comes to, uh, you know, integrating itself with practicals that we've uh, seen over here, you know, the smaller uh, the unit, the more linear it is, it was perfect for what we had to do over here. You could do so much with it and a, t a two foot, maybe not so much. Yeah, a two foot two would be really, really hard to hide behind that now. Showing a sign, hide behind the lamp, lava lamp, hide behind the lamp in general, or even use as an eye light. It would definitely be too wide or also too large for that candle effect. Imagine, especially without pixel control, the T2C having a two foot length and only emitting as one single source, the wrap from that light would provide too unnatural of an effect for that close up of a candle like fire effect. Mm -hmm. And all the rigging points, obviously, that make it really balanced. Yeah, right that here. makes it great to Hollywood as an eye light, Hollywood in pretty much any situation. All <laughs> these situations that we mentioned right here are great examples of why it is a mini light, why it's a mini LED, and how mini LEDs can really add that last little bit of quality to your scene. Yeah, you can really get creative with one of these uh, or multiple of these. Mm -hmm. As you can see, we just peppered the entire set with MT Pros and it just really and blew everything the, up. the level yeah. of the scene for sure. Mm -hmm. So I know we've talked a lot. You've heard me talking all day now. <laughs> You've heard Tway talking about the MT Pro. If you want to see someone else show you their experience with the MT Pro, we actually shot a featurette with Clifton Stommel, who again was inspired by the feature set of the MT Pro, wrote a short film, and we helped him shoot it. So V and Clifton are going to talk about that just in a little bit. Yeah, and don't forget that after that, we are obviously talking with one of our uh, closest friends, Kazuo Okuda, product cinematographer galore. And he's going to sh uh, show you the tips of the trade when it comes to luxury commercial product cinematography, how he got started, and um, career advice for people who want to get started in that field. And his thoughts on the MT Pro. So mm -hmm. without further ado, yep, let's roll. My name is Valentina V and this is Clifton Stommel. We're here on the hottest day in the summer in Clifton's garage. Nice and, and toasty. I'm wearing all black because you are shooting a short. Before we intro that, let's tell the people who you are. What do you do? I'm a director of photography uh, living in Los Angeles and been here for about six years doing that. And the non-union level, working my way into the union. Six years yeah. he's been here. Six years. Look at how much stuff he's accumulated in six years. Look at this stuff. Swing around over here. Look at this stuff. You have worse gear acquisition syndrome than I do. Oh, it's so bad. It's and so bad. That's a compliment. <laughs> yeah. That's a compliment. Spring cleaning, huh? Do you think it's important to have like a certain amount of gear on hand when you are an indie filmmaker as opposed to like constantly renting things? Uh, we basically have a full production package here. When my wife and I first came out here with basically a DSLR, a boom mic, and an LED, we were like, we want to make sure that when we want to shoot our own stuff, yeah. we have bare minimally what we need to just what, what DSLR was it? It was a 5D Mark III with Magic Lantern shooting raw. That's right. <laughs> Basically, since then, it's just grown uh, more than anything. Every time that we do a shoot, every pain point or every opportunity to, to you know, ease the friction or make the workflow go smoother, that's what I invest in. So yeah. that when we want to shoot our own projects, again, we're just ready to grab stuff off the shelf and get rolling right away. The stuff that I end up investing in, honestly, is grip. Grip mm -hmm. and lighting. Because cameras always change, camera technology always changes, you can get newer and newer stuff, but mm -hmm. lighting's gonna be the thing that lasts. Yes. All yeah. you need is a garage, mm -hmm. a bunch of gear, and some friends. Just a garage, a bunch of gear, and some friends. Yeah. So today we're shooting a short film in which a man who's cleaning out his garage and breaking down boxes discovers a very odd prototype of some liminal space technology that is a storage box with an even larger seemingly infinite space inside. It is a prototype, so it doesn't function quite like it would. Careful there, you'll fall all the way in. And he does, in fact, fall all the way in. Uh, and by the end of it, we get to see a wonderful moment of the box collapsing and the impending doom. Do you usually put storyboards on your door like this? Is this the go-to method? This is the go-to method. When it comes to our shorts, yeah. Um, sometimes the client will provide storyboards or they'll just have a, you know, rush together shot list and be like, just come out here in the morning and there isn't time. But when it comes to our own stuff, storyboarding obviously makes an ambitious day like today 
a greater possibility of getting everything we want. So taking the time to do this in pre-production is massive. See the edits, see how it's all gonna flow, just yeah. knowing shot by shot by shot how the whole thing's gonna flow. Do you cross them out when you're done I with do. it? I do, yeah. That's so satisfying. It is so satisfying, yeah. Love that. So we have some lights here. How are yes. we planning to use these guys right here. So these guys, the MT Pro, these have this wonderful pixel chase effect. So this is actually gonna be our lighting gag so that when we see the box from the outside, but okay. when the light is in here and you can't see the light, ideally, then you'll see the effect, and I'll show you so you can see is what I'm talking about, right? Through the little crack there. Oh, that's yeah. why it's not a real that's why box. It's not a real box. And then when we see into the box from the from the inside, from the outside, we'll see the same lighted effect. Oh, so this is like, showing off the surreal aspect of it, exactly. the magic. Exactly, yeah. The MT Pro has, I believe, 36 pixels. A ton of pixels. So you yeah. can do whatever different combinations of pixels, chase sequences, whatever you want on it. Yeah. It's basically 36 different lights in one, yeah. in a way. Which is, which is, when you see an effect like this, is what makes that really look like yeah. it's moving smoothly. It's actually sliding without gaps. It's those, true, those yeah. It jumps. doesn't have those stutters yeah. that a lot of lights with pixels do. It's very cool to be able to have something like this where you can sort of set this up around or within a miniature set or with a product lighted environment and being able to actually turn this from moving to even stopping at a specific spot. Oh, yeah. So to be able to actually take these lights, have them set up, and then move the light within the actual product, super valuable. Like if you want a small light, you can have a small light. Yes, yeah, exactly that. Yeah, because a lot of times also, maybe you don't want as much light because mm -hmm. you're trying to match a practical yeah. or what have you. And even at you know 1% on this, it's still too bright. So then right. you just take it down to a pixel. It's like 5% of what this thing can do. And it's already so much more than what I even thought I needed. But now it's giving me a bunch of ideas for where to go from here. So. I have yeah. more short films I have planned for these little lights. All right, well, I wanna see how you accomplish this because this is a small garage that is mostly filled with film equipment. Yes. And it will transform through the magic of cinema. Mm -hmm. So let's get to it. You okay, ready? Let's get to it, I'm ready. Hot tip, I heard him saying the word sourcey. It means it looks lit. It looks artificially lit, right? Like right now, this is quite sourcey because there's a light about three feet from my face. So a lot of times in film, we want to make it seem like the light is natural, that the light exists in the environment. We either diffuse it, we move it further away, uh, we bend it in a certain way, we add more light in the background, anything to make it look less purposeful. My favorite way of making it look less sourcey is probably doing a book light. That is not when you simply diffuse, it's when you bounce it and then yeah. diffuse what you've bounced. So we're here today with JC, the gaffer on our wonderful little short film, and he has Citus Link and this wonderful little bridge tool for us. Yeah, so we're working with the bridge today. The awesome thing about this is it just makes your Bluetooth connection stronger. So I've worked in settings where I've had like 12 lights rigged up to the ceiling and the stage, and um, it just keeps everything connected so you have no issues with the app. So that when we're messing around and doing the light cues, we could just turn them on whenever they need to be gone and turn them off when they need to be off. The cool thing about this light is that for something like sci-fi, throwing this on the wall, putting it inside of like, let's say you have a console with a bunch of buttons, whatever it is you wanna do, but just creating a little bit more of that push for like realism in a science fiction world. So I'm really excited to use this, so let's see how it looks on camera. A lot of recycling. Do you think it'll fit in the bin? Don't know yet. Okay, well, if you need anything, uh, I'm just over the fence. Just give me a shout. Won't.
That was so cool. Thank you so much for having me and showing me your magic. Yeah, thanks for coming out. It's really great to have you on set. I can't wait to see the full short. Mm -hmm. Where is it gonna be? The full short will live on my YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash Clifton Stommel, as well as on the Stommel House Vimeo page. So if you wanna see that full thing, go on over there. If someone's trying to be a professional cinematographer, have their own studio, what's some advice that you can give? Like some real advice. It's worth having everything even if you're just acquiring mm. just whatever you can afford just to get rolling camera a lens sound shoot through a plastic cup if you need to some lights if you have the means of production even at just a base level then you aren't reliant on anyone else's time or anyone any uh, rental shops or budgets to just shoot what you want to shoot so you can just again call up some friends and say hey we have an afternoon in the garage who wants to shoot a little piece together. Honestly, he had audio equipment in his garage. He had all sorts of things that normally like DPs won't have. If you liked this video and everything we're doing on this channel, then be sure to like this video and also leave us a comment because we're always in the comments answering your questions. What's it like to be in the industry? Any questions for Clifton? Like we are happy to answer that. So go ahead and leave those in the comments. As always, it's been a pleasure and uh, it was so nice to meet you. Good to meet you as well. Thank you so much. And thank you guys. Dude, What's his one. name? Uh, his name is Harold, which is long for Harry. Harold. For obvious reasons. Harry. This guy is my stand-in. Hey everyone, Brandon here in the Aperture Studio, and we're here today to talk with one of our closest friends and collaborators, Kazuo Okuda, who is an amazing product cinematographer, shooting for brands like Tom Ford, Bulgari, and of course, Aperture. Every single robotic product shot you've ever seen in an Aperture commercial was shot by Kazuo right here. So today we're gonna dive into his story, some tips and tricks he has to share, and of course his experience with the MT Pro. Hey Kazuo, how you doing? Oh, thanks for having me. So how did you get started in your cinematography career? You've been doing this for a long time now. I used to be a studio engineer, mixing sound and music. Some of the camera guys that I knew that were freelancing, I used to give them tips and they started teaching me camera stuff. The producer of the show asked them if they have anybody who they recommend to fill in. They're like, yeah, well, why don't you ask Kazoo? I started working for this company and they would just send me out to all these dangerous trips, post-earthquakes, war, and stuff like that. So I was like, okay, I gotta slow down a little bit. Somebody recommended me this still life photographer. He was working with these colossal budgets. The shooting conditions I was in was actually not normal. I actually learned what things cost and tried to find a way to execute with the same mindset and train of thought, but at a much smaller scale. It's not about how much money I have to spend to make a shot. It's what do I want to accomplish in the shot. Little by little, I think in the matter of the next few years, I kind of started developing a portfolio and a body of work that I felt is a representation of what I do. So you've taken the embodiment of, I only want to do work that I can contribute to and that it's something that I can do and that someone else can't do and applied that to basically your entire portfolio and style of cinematography. I had a realization point in cinematography. We had a good budget for a short and I over-executed. I completely failed the director that I took it on my own to make this thing look the way I wanted to without respecting the storytelling side. My job is not to tell the story. My job is to facilitate and elevate telling the story that the director wants to tell. Brands are really split between how they want metallics and especially gold to look like. A lot of brands want metallic to look more chrome, more shiny. Gold can look a little greenish or a little reddish. Gold always leans towards reddish orange. That differs from brand to brand. Speaking about that, like when working with directors and working with clients and facilitating their visions, what goes into your creative process? The first thing is finding out what's wrong, what they don't want to show before we find out what they want to express. So highlighting their product in the best way by downplaying any imperfections they don't want to show. I try to do everything much as possible in camera. 
you know, I talk to my gaffers and my team, we set up everything. I look at the distance with product. I just look where the camera's supposed to be. But when I'm lighting people, I stand where they're supposed to be. You can see a lot of things you might not see if you just keep looking at a screen. By looking at it, you can come up with additional ideas and angles. And then when I feel comfortable enough to finesse, I turn the camera on. A lot of times I just take my phone camera, kind of move it around, try to take a look at it to audition some camera moves. And then I share that with the director. And then we decide which ones we like, and pitch those moves and then put them in the storyboards. I actually like camera movement to be pretty simple. I like two point moves, A to B. I think simplicity is key. A lot of brands want to look more shiny. You have to approach it from a harder lighting standpoint. To execute that, I need things to be less soft. Texture is really important. That hard light is actually more important than the soft light in order to catch that texture. You know, I try to think of like a bottle or a product as if it's a person, you know? Okay, so it's a whiskey bottle. If I'm trying to light just the texture of this, I need a small source. I have to be able to backlight this, being able to get close enough, tuck it away, and but small enough to light just this texture here but not spill here. If I wanted to get this beautiful highlight here across the whole side of the bottle, I need a larger source than whatever I used here. I imagine because you're shooting all these product stuff that are physically smaller than humans, that those become kind of proportionally properly sized sources. A half white with a 300 is a very good starting point as far as balance goes. Um, I think this new toy that I got here the MT Pro, to be honest, I've only used it on two shoots so far, but it's been indispensable. You know, I really like the Citus app as a complement to DMX, not as a DMX replacement. A lot of lights this size doesn't have the simplicity and the controls as much as this one does. And I, I love the way that you're dissecting it too, like kind of looking at it from the the lens and perspective of someone who is staring at products all day, other people's products. Well, you know, there's so many products out now, you have to actually decide what to spend your money on and what to really look at, you know? How do you see yourself being able to use the functionality and the 36 pixels that we packed into the MT Pro? Now, it really opens up a lot more ideas, honestly. Instead of it just being a tool, I think it can actually be a catalyst for new lighting scheme ideas. How do you treat colors and reflectivity when you're lighting on set because of this? I imagine reflections are really, really important in the line of work you do. This allows you to light by surface. You know, you could kind of think of this as a diffusion plus a bunch of lights inside. Approaching color is like enhancing the color. It's about making it look better. It's not about making it look like something it's not. My job is to have solutions. And I think this provides me with a few solutions for stuff I haven't encountered yet. Well, thanks for talking so much about the MT Pro. I think one of the last questions I have for you, what advice do you have for new filmmakers, beginning filmmakers, aspiring filmmakers who are interested in the world of commercial product cinematography? I think the very first thing you should do is study work that you like and dislike, and really ask yourself why you like it and why you don't like it. It helps you develop a taste, and I think it can guide you for your own journey to figure out what your own lighting style is and what you want to do. You have to like something. I think the worst thing you can do is just be on a set and light something and not sure if it looks good. And I think it's really important that you reset yourself after every shoot. You don't form a basic approach to things. I think the most important thing is to approach every shoot as if it's a brand new shoot. I mean, that's all fantastic advice that uh, I wish that I had learned a little bit earlier myself, like when I was getting started. Um, I think a lot of people will appreciate what you just had to share. I also like to thank you guys because um, you guys have kind of been on the journey with me for quite a while. <laughs> but you've also been with us giving feedback on every single product and shooting all the high-end product cinematography for all our commercials and elevating it to a new standard that I don't think we would have been able to achieve as quickly without you. So with that, I say thank you one more time and see you next time.